On today's episode, we are getting into the latest space news, including Elon announces that Starship has completed the FAA's checklist, Firefly aces a military test going from standby to launch in under 27 hours, and Stoke Space completes their first static fire of their cutting-edge mini Starship. This is The Space Race. Last week, the FAA officially closed the SpaceX-led mishap investigation into the first Starship test flight back in April, and while we were all very excited, the phrasing of the FAA's announcement and explanations of the work that needed to be done before a second launch could be attempted left many of us confused, even SpaceX CEO Elon Musk. After the dust had settled from the September 7th announcements, several key points were clarified by Elon in a social media post on September 10th. In it, Musk claimed that all 57 items required for the FAA to certify a second launch were already completed. The six additional issues that made the original FAA draft 63 items long are actually intended to be completed after this test and likely have conditions attached to them that the public can't know about. The intentionally vague language of the FAA list makes it hard for us to confirm if Elon is correct here, but Luckily, SpaceX themselves signaled that they were close to a launch attempt of their prototype Super Heavy rocket by destacking the huge vehicle on September 14th. Now, that might seem a little counterintuitive, but last week we mentioned that it was pretty unlikely we were going to see a launch during this stack. SpaceX might be hard to predict sometimes, but there had been no word on launch preparations before the FAA announcement, so the vehicle had likely only been prepped for tests and not a full launch. Sure enough, when the 14th rolled around, the team destacked the massive rocket while Kathy Luters, general manager of the Starship program, spoke about the timeline for launch. Luters did not give an exact date, but did explain that the FAA license isn't the only thing that SpaceX was waiting on. In fact, the next stretch of time would need to be used as the final stage of preparations before the next launch. More specifically, Kathy makes mention of the new flight termination system, which understandably was not installed in Ship 25 during these past few tests, as there wouldn't have been a reason to expose the new launch pad equipment to that level of danger for some simple stacking and tanking tests. This does tell us a couple of things though. First, it lets us know that the SpaceX team really has completed all of the required work for the FAA to approve their next launch, and the only thing the FAA has left to do is just to sign off on their new launch license. That shouldn't take very long at all, considering the huge amount of work that SpaceX did alongside the FAA for the last couple of months. The thing we're really waiting on here is the final flight prep of both the booster and Ship 25. We know they have to install the FTS, but they also have to recheck seals and go through a full flight inspection. SpaceX crews are experienced and work fast, but this sort of job could still take over a week to complete. Which puts us into October for the next test. It's not overly likely that the test flight would be delayed any further than October, unless the engineers find something incredibly wrong with the vehicle before the next stacking. But just like with earlier tests, SpaceX will be required to inform the Coast Guard and local authorities, so it's likely that we'll get some advanced warning from launch watchers who keep a careful eye on road closure warnings and notices to mariners. So, not long now, everyone. On September 13th, the US Space Force sent a launch order to Vandenberg Space Force Base and the waiting team of engineers from Firefly Aerospace. Over the course of the next 27 hours, the engineers sealed a satellite payload into its fairing, mated it to one of their Alpha rockets, and launched it, a process that normally takes anywhere from weeks to months to achieve. The whole thing was part of a test called Victus Knox, a Space Force initiative to see just how quickly a military satellite could be placed in low Earth orbit should the need arise. Two companies were chosen to take part, Firefly Aerospace, a small launch service provider, and Millennium Space Systems, a small sat company based in California. These two would work together to prove that a new satellite could be placed in orbit and begin functioning within a 60-hour window. Now before we tell you how they did with their test, let's talk about how it was planned. First, the two teams would be placed on a hot standby phase, which would last for six months. During this time, both teams would have to keep their equipment ready to move at a moment's notice, in case the order to launch came in. 
This means that the Firefly team had to keep their rocket in launch-capable condition, and the Millennium team had to have their satellite ready to go. While in this phase, the order would come from Space Force Command without warning. The order would start a 60-hour clock, and Millennium was the first up. They'd complete final checks, load their satellite onto a truck, and ship it almost three hours down the California coast to Vandenberg. The Firefly engineers then have to test the satellite for launch readiness, fuel it, and attach it to the payload adapter. From there, the Firefly team has 24 hours to attach the payload adapter onto their rocket, update the trajectory on their flight computers, transport the whole thing to the pad, and wait for a good window to launch. Once in orbit, the ball is back in Millennium's court, as they have 48 more hours to activate the satellite and make sure it's in the proper orbit before beginning operations. All told, the only holdup was an extra three hours spent waiting for the weather to clear enough to launch at the pad. An extremely successful test. Now, obviously, these two teams didn't exactly start from scratch here, but completing an entire launch from payload integration to orbital operations in under 132 hours, or a little over five days, is an astounding achievement. Nobody has worked that fast before. Space Force leadership was understandably thrilled with the results of this test, which they say proved that the US has the capability to launch an orbital asset in a timely manner for the first time. And that bodes well for Firefly and Millennium, both of which have plans for expansion following this test. Firefly themselves managed to land another government contract with L3 Harris to launch three satellites for the Space Force in 2026, all while they expand their small lift Alpha rocket production facility in Briggs, Texas, and plan to continue development of a medium lift vehicle in 2025. Using commercial companies to support this sort of readiness program is a bit risky, but certainly paid off in this case, and more importantly, proving that current technology can support this sort of preparation speed only makes us wonder what will be possible once companies like SpaceX perfect the sort of launch cadence they are aiming for with Starship. Washington-based Stoke Space has had a big week with their Hopper 2 test vehicle. This startup company burst onto the scene in early 2023 with a fully reusable two-stage methane-powered rocket that was designed for propulsive landings after return from orbit, essentially a tiny Starship with some very promising new technology. The biggest innovations of this prototype vehicle was its regenerative heat shield and the use of re-entry heat to power the second stage fuel pumps. On September 14th, the Stoke team set up their newest upper stage simulator on a test stand and completed some static fire tests. Yes, this prototype looks very rough, but they are still in early days for their tech, and the real point of this test was to stress their thruster systems, another new technology the team is working out. Going with the idea of having a totally reusable vehicle, the second stage that the team is currently testing with their hopper prototypes is meant to make powered landings with a sophisticated suite of avionics and reaction control systems. The hopper itself is meant to roughly approximate the final upper stage vehicle the Stoke team is designing. Its propulsion system is a ring of methane-fueled engines that are individually weaker than what would be on a more conventional vehicle, but are better protected under the vehicle's cowling and can work together with more control. The test on September 14th may have been static, but as part of the onboard navigation computer tests, the team shocked the hopper's computers into thinking it was tumbling out of control. In response, the reaction control system fired and righted the craft. This test was a huge success as Stoke hadn't had the chance to really test all these systems before, and even if it was a simulation, the software and hardware had acted the way they were supposed to. Not to mention that tricking your flight computer into thinking the stationary hopper is actually rolling through the air so you can test the automatic writing systems is just a genius way to pull that off. So obviously the next step was to try a real hop. On September 17th, Stoke committed their little prototype to a quick hop test, very similar to early Starship hop tests that most of us have seen before. You can see the ring of smaller methane engines cycle up and push the hopper back and forth without even needing to use its reaction control thrusters. Another great design feature for this type of lander that ensures extra control while trying to even out for a safe touchdown. Honestly, it's really easy to see why people are so excited for this company to make progress. 
Their ideas are interesting, and they've already built a lot of the fundamental tech needed to make their vehicles work. A fully reusable rocket with this sort of control would likely be very successful with the right funding. Meet us back here every week for more updates on everything aerospace industry and interstellar exploration related. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up today if you liked it, that really helps us out for real. And subscribe to the Space Race for more videos just like this. We do one long form essay and one news update every week. And if you'd like more, we've got two more on the screen for you right now.